Hi, Dyslexic Genius here. We're back on a pinch with the uh, Edison Home Ground Up Restoration for the museum, and I want to talk about stripping and the problems with the white paint from the previous video. And you can see we have paint here, and we have a little white paint here, and this all this top was off. And then you can see we have these little, like, little blackheads all over its nose. See these little black things right here like that and that? Well, that is what was left of the white paint, but the white paint was there. My sweet angel likes to do this because I do, once in a while I'll work on two machines at the same time, and that's what we're doing here. This was the white paint. So you can pick it off with a dental pick like this, but what we really do is we come in and lay a razor blade down and gently come in and just chip out the paint and then use the edge of the razor blade to come in here. Now, what happens is all the wood on the top looks like my fingers because this machine got wet and I will get there in a moment. And it looks like this. So all that paint and crap went into the grooves of the grains of the wood. So the paint hit it. The finish had been washed off from water because it had been sitting someplace like in an attic, a basement, and it had gone into here. So once you've picked this out real well, and you can use a dental pick or one edge straight razor, I take this stainless steel wire brush, this round one, and you come in here, like this one here, and take it out, the rest of it out. What happens is little wire brushes are getting into the grooves. You don't want to come in and go, oh, I got a piece of white paint, and dyslexic said use a wire brush. Oh, hell no. You're going to have to come back, dental pick, or use a straight razor, to get it off till you get to here, then you will. So you start with a single sided blade. Yep, and then you use the point of the razor blade. And you, if you look close, if my angel can focus in, you see there, real quick, there's a piece of white paint in there. You see this? It literally super glues itself into the finish and everything. Because the fibers were expanded. Expanded, plus probably this paint had a reaction to the shellac or varnish on the machine and it melted it and it melted into the wood. So then you go, okay, you see that little speck? You have to pay super close attention on, this, on the woodwork. Then you come in, only a couple of strokes. Then you see right there, there's a little piece of white. Once you put finish on it, that's gonna pop up like a boil. So you have to go through, and you only want to do two or three strokes in there. And then there's a little one right there. And I will tell you, you will sit there for the whole afternoon. Now what happens is, the machine had the early green tinge to it. And because it got wet, it washed the whole finish and the green tinge out. So what we do, and I'll show you why, why in a minute. You see this side of the base plate? And you see how this is nice. You can see the green tinge here. And because the cross grain here, it doesn't soak in. And you feel across, you have, this is all touchy feel. You feel here and you go, oh, that's nice and smooth. But you get over to this, now look closely. Remember I talked about this is what the top of the wood looks like, like this? Well here, it washed the whole top of everything out, so this feels very rough. So you have to sand all this down smooth when you get it back. When you get it back from the stripper, it is not going to be super, super clean. Now on the cabinet, because it had a band or decal like that, once you strip them off and the decal disappears, you're going to have an outline of the decal, the banner decal or the Edison decal or whatever phonograph you're working on. Now what you have to do is you have a super light spot in the wood and then you have the dark stain. On this, 
to get rid of it, you look at this, you go over it with 320, and you use an orbital sander. Tried 320. So what I do is, I'm not going to work up in grit, I'm going to work down in grit. So I went 320, 220, 150, and I got to 100 grit, which is pretty coarse, and it finally smoothed out and took out the stain so you don't see the decal mark. Because once you stain it, that's going to pop, the, the light area is going to pop out on the finish. And this takes a lot of work. I mean, this is tremendous amounts of labor and time. But if you ever want to learn how to do a phonograph, and you really want to know how to do things, buy a junker and rebuild it from the ground up like that. I'm, we're known for ground ups. You can look at Livingston and his all-girl band stuff and other ones we've done. But this is what it takes. But normally you would Nor not do this to a machine. No, normally you would not do this as a machine. Unless the finish is shot. Say the finish is bad, so we test it and we say, okay, it's in shellac, then we can reamalgamate it like we've done on horns and other machines for people. And it works out very well. But this, you know, we have these problems and a lot of other problems. And literally this thing was really full of moisture when we first got it. And I, after, before I stripped it, I kind of left it out in the sun to dry out a little more and was looking at it and say, okay. But you will get machines that green paint, seafoam green, white. Because otherwise you would have just tossed it. Yeah, you would, people would have tossed it. You know, you find a junker complete, do the whole thing. And that's how you learn. And that's my tip for the day.